Hi, this is Margaret Maloney, and welcome to the Death Dhamma Podcast. Together, we will consider life, death, and impermanence. Because in between birth and death, we lose things, not just our glasses and our keys. We lose identities, relationships, ideas, and more. But what we can gain right now is facing this together, and we will gain freedom, peace, and progress on our path. Hi, everyone. Margaret Maloney here, and welcome. And before we jump in, please be advised, in this episode, I refer to a story that Kim Yamarashi told that involves discussing an individual being arrested and how a family member was attacked while this person was in jail. So be aware and proceed in a way that best supports your emotional and mental health. Thank you. Toward the start of our discussion, Ken says to me, I like to say that I'm at home in anyone's church. However, I think that there are great lessons to be learned from the teachings of Buddhism. And I thought right away, what a nice way to respect the traditions of others while acknowledging what best supports him on his path. Coming from a background of trauma and divorce and difficult experiences from serving in the military and as a police officer, Ken reconciles martial arts with Buddhist philosophy. In fact, he offers help to others through his work at Everyday Samurai, which you can find at www.everydaysamurai.life. He's acutely aware that other veterans have taken their lives or may be tempted to do so, and he has his own traumas that he reflects on. He thinks deeply about how his karma has intersected with others. For example, he shares the story of a man he once arrested. The man didn't like it, of course, but did not resist arrest. And this man was unable to make bail and spent the weekend in jail. While he was in jail, one of his family members was attacked. In this story, Ken knows that he was performing his job in an honorable way, and yet this difficult thing occurred. When it comes to cause and effect, our karma can be intertwined. We're not walking the planet alone, and so we may walk into a situation where we play a role in the outcome of another human being or other sentient being. And just as others might be present in situations where our karma unfolds. This is a good reminder. Karma doesn't mean fault. It means action. Your karma is shaped by your past and current actions. Based on your past and current actions, your karma will ripen. This is true for you and it's true for others. And you can make yourself very unhappy by spending too much time thinking about what if, right? What if I hadn't have been there? What if I had been there? What if this, that, or the other thing? And the best thing that you can do is to keep living your life on the path and seeking to have wholesome words and actions. And you may experience difficult karma that will ripen for you. You may experience the ripening of difficult karma for others, but don't put too much weight on yourself when someone near you has difficult karma. Just try to do the best you can that that support them. And remember that each of us have our own karma. We don't know how or when or if it will ripen. It's important for us all to find a way to process trauma. Ken has found his path in the teachings of Shin Zen Yang, specifically a framework called unified mindfulness. Ken uses this approach to develop mindfulness skills as defined by concentration power, sensory clarity, and equanimity. And he explained it a little bit to me. I'm going to go over it a little bit with you Now, however, I am not the expert in this practice. I have a different practice of my own that I use. And so I truly do recommend that you visit Ken at his website to learn more and to even consider maybe sitting with him, you know, participating in a meditation with him. But the concentration power, this is the ability to focus, to keep your mind on whatever the object of your meditation 
is. And sensory clarity is to become aware of how sensory input come up for you while you are meditating and learn how to recognize and divide things based on how they show up. You may feel something, you know, very emotionally. You may feel something physically, a tightness in your throat or in your stomach or someplace else. So the idea is that by dividing, you make it easier to digest or process these things because you notice them as they come up and you put them in the proper category or bucket, if you will. And in that way, you're not trying to take care of everything all at once. You're not trying to process an emotional and a physical charge all at the same time. So that again, the idea, dividing them, making it easier to process, you know, placing categories, emotional charges and physical charges into their separate buckets, then you can handle each bucket in its own place. And as it makes sense to do so, you know, based is how these things come up that are associations that arise for you as you sit and your memories and your experiences come up. Now I said, as you sit and I'm saying, as you meditate, I think it's important to note though, that all of life can be a form of meditation, right? You could be doing the dishes and something could arise for you. You could be driving, you could be cooking, you could be doing walking meditation or you could be doing sitting meditation. Things are going to arise, especially as you have past traumas that you're still carrying and you want to, you know, find the way that works for you to acknowledge and handle the feelings, physical and emotional, you know, in your physical body and your emotional body of what comes up for you. Because, you know, stuffing it down, ignoring it, this is what can lead to some very unhealthy, unhappy outcomes. This is what, that's what can happen. So this is just a bit of what Ken shares. It's his practice. And as I said, as I started talking to you about this, you might consider visiting him at everydaysamurai.life and work with him or listen to some of his recordings. He has some things he's written as well. And in that way, you can find how his Buddhist practice is informing his life because he has a full life with many different challenging situations, which he shares with us in the full episode. And I, you know, I attached a an advisory message at the beginning of that full episode too, just to let you know, he has had some difficult things happen. We discussed them calmly and respectfully, but still knowing that some of those things can be triggering. So, you know, proceed in a way that makes best sense for you. And uh, know that, you know, Ken has found his way. He helps others find their way, especially those who might come from a military or law enforcement background. Not a requirement, but he might be especially the right kind of person for you if that's your background. And he has respect for other traditions. You know, he's got that, remember, that feeling comfortable in anybody's church. So he's not here to convert anyone. He's here to say, this is my life. Here's what I've lived and here's what helps me live now. You've been listening to the Death Dhamma Podcast with your host, Margaret Maloney. Thank you so much for being here. Come find me on margaretmaloney.com, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com. And until we meet again, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be at ease, And may you be free from suffering. Bye for now.